Have you ever had exciting news that you want to just burst to tell someone? Maybe you got an A on a test that you studied really, really hard for. Or maybe you found out that your all-time favorite author is coming to your local bookstore to do a signing. Or perhaps you were just picked as the school lead in the play or voted class president. You know that feeling when you just want to shout out to the whole world what just happened? You can't stop smiling. You want to twirl around. Well, the angels felt just like that when Jesus was born. They were so excited to tell the news. It was the best news ever, way better than an A on a test or being voted class president could ever be. They wanted to tell the world, but they could only tell the humble shepherds in the field. But these shepherds listened to the angels in amazement. They immediately left the field and went to find baby Jesus to worship him. When they arrived at that manger, they had to fall on their knees in adoration. It truly was a special holy night.
Even though the shepherds realized that it was a holy night, they also realized that the Savior of the world came for everyone, even the humble shepherds. After all, they saw baby Jesus in a manger, a feeding trough instead of a palace fit for a king. He was able to sleep away in a manger. Joshua, will you play for us Away in a Manger? like the last verse that says, And bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. After all, the shepherds wanted to stay with Jesus, but they had to leave and let the new family sleep that silent night. Perhaps you can sing along with John Harley, Kenley, and Nia as they sing Silent Night.
the way back to the fields, I can only imagine the pictures in the minds of the shepherds, how happy they were to see the face of Jesus, the Lord, even at his birth. It must have been some time that passed before another group of people came. Their job was to know all about science, math, and history, which led them to study the words of the Bible, even though they didn't come from a Christian nation. They had studied the stars and knew that that star had to mean the Savior of the world had been born as prophesied. The wisest thing they ever did was to search for the promised Messiah. Can you imagine their shock when they arrived? They must have asked, what child is this? What king would come in the humblest way? We really don't know how many wise men they were, but we do know that they had three gifts. They were so happy to share their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh with this humble family. They too wanted to join the angels from the realms of glory to worship Christ, the newborn king. How about you? Will you come and worship Christ, the newborn king? I hope you enjoy this next musical piece by Joshua, Michael, and Amy as they play Angels from the Realms of Glory.
for that beautiful music. Let me tell you a story about Raoul. Raoul was walking home from delivering some food to a neighbor when he saw an old man hunched over with an old leather bag that looked disgusting on his back, heading toward the house he had just left from. He noticed five boys heading to the man. One of them yanked the knitted hat off the old man. Where are you going? They teased, tossing the hat over him to each other. Oh, what's in that bag? Did you leave anything for us? The boys teased some more. It wasn't until a neighbor opened the door that the boys scurried off and the old man knocked on the door Raoul had just come from. Later that night, Raoul was ashamed of himself. He couldn't sleep. Why didn't I even try to help that old man? After all, he didn't do anything wrong. The next day was Christmas Eve and many people were having special suppers with their families. Raoul was outside bringing some firewood into the house when he heard footsteps in the distance. It was difficult to see through all the snow that had fallen that night sky, but the shape looked like that old man he had seen the day before, carrying his old bag and likely smelly bag over his shoulders. This time the bag seemed heavier than before and he had, was heading toward the rickety bridge. Where's that old man going, Raoul thought to himself. No one lives there in the woods, at least Raoul didn't think so. It only leads to the woods. By now, Raoul was curious, yet he decided he'd better head into the house to help prepare the fire. All evening, Raoul couldn't sleep because he couldn't stop thinking about that old man he kept tossing and turning. Eventually, he decided he'd better head into the house, outhouse. While he headed to the outhouse, he heard a man scream, and it crashed. This time, Raoul couldn't see anything, but he decided he'd spring into action. Raoul ran over to the rickety old bridge, and there was the old man, waist high in freezing water. Here, let me help you, said Raoul, lying over the ice to lend a helping hand. There was no doubt this man was cold, but his bag seemed empty. What's your name? asked Raoul. Franz de Bras. You mean the one and only Franz de Bras? The one that owns the tapestry? That started the conversation, and Raoul insisted that Mr. de Bras come into the house to get warm. Raoul had learned that Mr. Dubois had been giving gifts to the less fortunate for 10 years or more. Why do you do this, especially when it's dangerous like it was tonight? asked Raoul. Well, there are some children that just won't have anything for Christmas if I don't bring them something. But more than anything that gifts can provide, I want to bring joy into their lives. But the joy doesn't come from these gifts, it's more the fact that I pray for each family and through the years I see how God answers my prayers when they no longer need me to come to their homes to find that little bit of joy. They see the joy that comes from knowing Jesus and seeing their prayers answered is the best gift I can enjoy seeing. So you see, the best gift you can give others is really your time and most importantly, it's your prayers. Are there people you can think of that can use your prayers? I'm so glad that Jesus loves us so much and was willing to come and save us. Our next song was written by a friend of mine in Australia who reminds us that the most precious gift of all is really the love of Jesus who came to save us all. The most precious gift was given the night that Christ was born, Savior of the world, Jesus came to save us all. He came as one of us, He came humbly without fuss. Laying in a manger was God's greatest gift of love. Oh, glory. Of 
came humbly with the bus Laying in a manger Was God's greatest gift of love All glory to Jesus Hallelujah All glory to Jesus Was God's greatest gift of love All glory Once we realize the precious and humble gift of Jesus, we can't be silent. We want to tell everyone about the good news of Jesus and that He has come to save everyone, including you. Will you help spread the good news? Are you ready to tell what Jesus has done for you and go tell it on the mountain? Jesus Christ is born. 